Okay, may, may I start the first session? Okay. So thank you for participation the, for the first ammonia combustion meeting. So that so now I I'd like to start the first session. I'm a, I'm chair of this session. I'm Akihiro Hayakawa from Tokyo University, Japan. So there are two talks for the first session. So the first session is the fun is the topics for the first session is the fundamental of the ammonia combustion. The, the pr presenter is a professor Hideaki Kobayashi from Tohoku University and uh, uh, Robert, Dr. Robert Barrow from Barrow Combustion Research. Okay, let's start the talk. So the first presentation is the Professor Kobayashi. The title is Challenges and the Perspective of Ammonia Combustion for Carbon Neutrality. So pr Professor Kobayashi, please start. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear. Okay. Uh, I'm sharing it in my screen. Yes, please. Yes, I can see the screen. I can see that's my, uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you for introducing me, Professor Hayakawa. And uh, I congratulate the CCRC Coast for organizing the ammonia combustion meeting. I'm happy to be the first to present the topic. Yeah. Uh, although the uh, Professor Hayaka told that it's a basic uh, fundamental combustion or session, but uh, uh, I am talking about something more about the uh, the background of the uh, uh, the research of ammonia combustion or uh, utilization, especially in the uh, power generation, especially in Japan and the political uh, uh, policy making and uh, many many things. So, so I'm afraid that. Uh, Time is uh, limited. I uh, I tried to speak first, but uh, 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 I'm trying to uh, make my uh, uh, talk in uh, 20 minutes or a little bit more, about 20 minutes. Anyway, um, okay, I, I'd like to start. Uh, uh, yeah, many of us are involved in a basic fundamental combustion research, and I believe that the purpose of this workshop is uh, uh, fundamental research. However, the ammonia combustion is a strong candidate for decarbonization, especially in the power generation. And it is a lot of combustion research as a community to hasten its practical application, I guess. So uh, we, especially the ammonia combustion group in Japan, uh, aim to conduct the research uh, for practical applications. And uh, basic research also addressed issues found in the diverse from practical research. Yeah, in addition, the energy needs of society are enormous. And uh, in order to use ammonia as an energy source, uh, it is essential to establish the supply chain in parallel with the uh, development of utilization technology. For this reason, the Japanese government is strongly promoting the uh, uh, construction of a supply chain through the uh, international cooperation as well as the development of technologies for use in power generation and other applications. So uh, my talk will focus not only the uh, science technology, uh, but also on the important topic of supply chain development effort. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, sorry. Um, now many of you wonder why Japan is uh, putting so much emphasis on the uh, use of ammonia for uh, combustion, especially the power generation. I'd like to start by explaining the situations. Um, in COP uh, uh, 21st in 2015, an agreement was uh, reached to the international effort to address the climate change. However, it seems that Japan's efforts have been criticized not for being proactive enough. One of the major reasons for this is that the Fukushima, you know, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident in 2011. Uh, this accident shut down all the nuclear plant in Japan and we lost the tools for decarbonizing the power sectors. After the accident, Japan returned to the using fossil fuels, including the coal-fired power plant, and uh, relates, uh, relies on uh, imports more than 90% of its energy needs. 
in Japan, the debate on the decarbonization has become inseparable from the issue of restarting nuclear power generation and has not made much progress. Another reason is the lack of the renewable source in Japan due to the small Japan's island area. Japan already has the largest the, uh, 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 amount of solar power generation per land area in the world. The, uh, also, because of the uh, depth of the ocean, it's not easy to expand the offshore wind power for, uh, for fuel conversion. Hydrogen has been uh, considered as a first choice, of course, a project to import the hydrogen from overseas and use it in Japan has been underway nearly over 30 years. And uh, Mirai, you know the car, the fuel cell vehicle is one of the re uh, result of that effort. Actually, Japan needs to import the almost all of the fuel from overseas by ship. But the challenge is the cost. This is the most important thing. So the research and development of the hydrogen carriers were performed from 2014 to 2019 under the SIP energy carrier project. The purpose is uh, 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 to compare that uh, three hydrogen carriers and compare their cost and utilization technology advantages. The project was uh, successful and the results are now reflected in Japan's uh, national policy. The, uh, uh, this figure shows the uh, schematic of the supply channel of hydrogen. That's the SIP energy carrier project was involved. The hydrogen is generated by the fossil fuels with CCC, a CCS or renewable energy and then shipped to Japan. Uh, Japanese energy organization uh, determined that the three promising hydrogen carriers, the liquid hydrogen, organic hydrolite, and um, ammonia. As for ammonia, uh, uh, um, ammonia can burn without the uh, uh, composition to hydrogens. Therefore, the project included uh, some programs to utilize ammonia uh, uh, direct combustion. The success of this project has uh, stimulated discussions about the hydrogen carriers, especially direct combustion uh, of ammonia led to increased interest in fuel ammonia by electrical power companies and the trading companies, as well as Japan's gov Japanese government. The, uh, in uh, 2020, the JERA, the Japanese largest the, uh, power company, announced that it, they, uh, it would use the ammonia for co-firing with the polarized coal and announced the plans to single fuel use of ammonia as well as the hydrogen used in a gas turbine power generation by 2040. The, uh, in October 2020, the previous Prime Minister Suga the, uh, uh, declared that the uh, uh, Japan's uh, uh, would be carbon neutrality, carbon neutrality by 2050. As a result, in December 2020, the Japanese government announced a green growth strategy in which they identified fuel ammonia industry and the hydrogen industry uh, as two two of the 14 priority area. The furthermore, uh, in uh, 2021, Japanese government approved the renewed basic energy plan. The, uh, the, according to the plan, the share of the, uh, uh, the renewable energy in the power generation sector will be significantly increased, but and hydrogen ammonia power generation will account for 1% of total power generation in 2030. Although the 1% uh, may look uh, very small, it is a huge amount of energy considering the total amount of electricity used in Japan. And uh, the recognition of ammonia as a new energy source is very significant. Actually, it is suggested that the percent will be reached to 10% by uh, 2050. Um, yeah. I, 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 have, I don't have to <laughs> explain about this, but uh, you may know that already why the ammonia is a good candidate for the hydrogen energy carriers. And so in the table of the, uh, the, the fe fe uh, features of hydrogen carriers, we know that the liquefaction temperature of hydrogen is very low, it is difficult to use, and but uh, ammonia is good because it's minus 33 degrees Celsius. 
Uh, when pressurized ammonia is easily liquefied about 10 atmosphere. And interestingly, liquid ammonia has a, a large, higher uh, 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 hydrogen content than liquid hydrogen per cubic meter uh, shown in these uh, uh, pictures. The volume of ammonia is the smallest uh, than the carry, uh, than the, uh, that carry one cubic meter of gaseous hydrogen and as shown in the pictures. Ammonia is classified in poison, actually, but uh, uh, it is a biological substance and no effect on uh, uh, genes. Another advantage is that ammonia has the 100-year history of production, storage, and the transportation, and the infrastructure of these activities already put in place. Yeah, over the past five years, uh, uh, several international institutions, including IEA, issued a report on hydrogen, including ammonia. In the report issued in two, uh, 2017, uh, Japanese uh, energy carrier project was introduced here. And uh, uh, in the report, the future of hydrogen uh, uh, in 2019 prepared for G20 in Japan. Uh, com uh, comparative the estimate of hydrogen and ammonia were presented. Very lately, our the energy outlook uh, 2021 has uh, highlighted the role of hydrogen and ammonia for uh, net zero strategy. Also, uh, the, the report is the role of low carbon in uh, green energy transportation and power sectors issued last year. A comparison to hydrogen and ammonia was presented in terms of the production and transportation costs. That is the important point, especially in Japan. This report identified the influence policy, uh, ident uh, differently influenced uh, the policy making of government and uh, corporate strategy uh, uh, decisions. This figure shows that the estimated cost of ammonia production from the report, uh, the gray area, the gray area that indicates the, uh, 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 the cost that depends on the location of production. The current basic production method, uh, which uses natural gas and raw as a raw materials and release the CO2 into the atmosphere during the production of ammonia is of course the cheapest, but that has the high CO2 emission factors. Uh, if the uh, US is using the uh, combination with the natural gas cost of production, Blue ammonia uh, increased, but does not double. This is a case when the estimation of, from the uh, construction, the plant, and the recovered. The cost of the green ammonia uh, using the hydrogen from the renewable energy source is highly uh, dependent on the location of the production, that is, the price of electricity from the renewable energy source. That is why Japan needs the national cooperation of uh, the development of ammonia supply chain. This figure shows the transportation cost of the hydrogen ammonia from the report. Interesting point is that the pipeline hydrogen uh, transport is uh, superior in terms of supply cost when the transport distance is generally are uh, 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 1,000 kilometers or less. While the, uh, the marine transport uh, of the ammonia by tanker ship is uh, superior when the, uh, the transport distance exceeds uh, 10,000 kilometers. Therefore, Japan is interested in, uh, in, in importing the hydrogen in terms of ammonia. The uh, imported ammonia can be used directly as a fuel and uh, therefore energy efficient. In Europe, uh, where the natural gas pipelines as well uh, are well developed and the cost of the building a new pipeline is not significant, it is easy to understand why there is no such interest, uh, interest in, uh, uh, there is so much interest in hydrogen. This diagram shows how Japan is trying to build an international ammonia supply chain using the cost map of the hydrogen from a hybrid system, solar PV and onshore wind power over the long term uh, reported by the IEA. It is clearly shown that Japan is poor <laughs> in renewable energy source. Historically, Japan has imported the most of its energy source from abroad by ship. 
We will work to secure the renewable energy source, but even in 2050, we plan to meet more than 40% of our energy need for power generation from overseas imports and nuclear power plant. On the other hand, at the other hand, Australia and uh, uh, Middle East countries and uh, South America look like, uh, like Chile has had a lot of renewable energy and will be exporting carbon-free fuel in future. Uh, the candidates are, of course, hydrogen and ammonia. Japan is promoting the development of carbon-free energy technology, including combustion, and they would like to export uh, export the technology to Asian countries where the fuels are essential for a, a national economy. Uh, actually, in 1970s, Japanese trading companies have established an international distribution network for uh, liquid nat natural gas. And again, they are keen to establish a carbon-free fuel supply chain with many countries around the world. Uh, this is a final slide for the supply chain, as shown in the uh, previous slides, Saudi Arabia and Australia are rich in renewable energy. In terms of the ammonia, Japan plans to import 3 million tons of blue and green ammonia from overseas per year by 2030. Yeah. Actually, in 2020, Saudi Aramco shipped to 40 tons. It's not big. Uh, but uh, 40 tons of blue ammonia to Japan the first time uh, to demonstrate uh, ammonia combustion power generation. The Australia has also identified hydrogen ammonia as a future fuel, uh, future energy export pillar in its national hydrogen strategy. Uh, as already mentioned, establishment of ammonia supply chain need to be done in parallel with the uh, technological development of utilization technology of ammonia. Therefore, we are um, envisioning the scenario that starts with gray ammonia uh, of the utilization technology development and switch to the blue ammonia by 2030 and then shift to use of green ammonia after that. Okay, uh, uh, although I have been talking about the policy making a supply chain, in the following, I would like to discuss ammonia combustion and technological development. Uh, this figure is a table that shows the physical properties of um, hydrogen ammonia as fuels along with the other hydrocarbon fuels you know already. Uh, as for the heating value of the thermal of the energy density, uh, the hydrogen has the largest, of course, uh, 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 gravimetric energy density. But interestingly, volumetric energy density in ammonia is larger than that of the uh, hydrogen, liquid hydrogen. Of course, the most important uh, the potential of hydrogen and ammonia is that there is carbon-free fuels. However, hydrogen and ammonia uh, each have their own challenges. Um, yeah. Uh, hydrogen has a too uh, high burning velocity and, uh, 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 and uh, produce the summer NOx due to its high frame temperature. On the other hand, ammonia has a low combustion intensity and they produce the fewer NOx uh, derived from the nitrogen fuel. So high fuel NOx emission must be the most serious issue of ammonia combustion, but we can solve it in well-controlled combustor to be stated later. The most challenge is the power, uh, uh, the last challenge, sorry, the last challenge is a lower radiation intensity uh, for uh, both hydrogen and uh, uh, ammonia combustion. Uh, uh, that would be the issue when used, it, they are used in industrial furnace, but uh, we, uh, I will not go into details on the radiation. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to discuss the contents uh, related to the ammonia gas turbine development. These lava scale swirl burners have an inner diameter of the 72 millimeters, it's very small. And the swirl number is about 0.7. Because of the uh, limit of the gas supply, the maximum heat release is 25 kilowatt, but single fuel the ammonia flame strong enough. Due to small R laminar burning velocity, there exists a lower limit 
uh, but it's an interesting point. And uh, uh, flame lengths of the singular ammonia or uh, ammonia air flame is longer than that the methane flame and uh, ammonia air flame coincides with this methane because of the longer characteristic uh, uh, chemical reaction time. These flame in a swirl burn are strong and successfully stabilized, indicating that the ammonia gas turbine are combust that works well, even for a single ammonia field operation. Okay, these figures show that uh, pressure and the temperature exponent of laminar burning burst they are for ammonia air flames flames and the methane air flames flames measured by spherically propagating flames. The pressure and the temperature exponent are used for facilitating the, or the numerical analysis and, uh, and combustion and uh, empirical combustion. And of course, they, these data are important for the validation of the combustion chemistry. I'm showing the left figures. Uh, the uh, uh, temperature exponent of ammonia flame is a two to three, which is larger than that of methane flame because the temperature dependent of H plus O2, the chain branching reaction, uh, which produced the OH and H radical has a higher effect that, than that of the methane frame. On the other hand, the pressure exponent of the laminar burning velocity uh, of the ammonia flame is close to zero. Okay. In other words, the decrease in the laminar velocity, velocity with increasing pressure is weaker than that of the methane flame. In uh, uh, IC engines, the spoke oil and the gas turbine, the gas temperature uh, rises during the compression process. So that is to say ammonia is uh, suitable for uh, combustion in the IC engines uh, because of the decrease of burning velocity but ammonia frame is small in high temperature and high pressure environment. Okay, so uh, to understand the laminar burning velocity and NOx emission characteristics, I'd like to very shortly discuss about the, the uh, difference in the combustion chemistry between uh, methane and ammonia. I think the money will discuss about very precise in the chemistry uh, are, and his, in his lecture this meeting. So very shortly, I'd like to uh, explain. Uh, the GRI MEC3 was used for methane and flame and the TIANS MEC was used for ammonia and flame. In the case of methane flame, uh, the uh, uh, mature radical CH3 is formed first and then subsequent formation of formaldehyde and the final CO2 formation are major heat release reaction. On the other hand, uh, the uh, ammonia combustion pathway is initiated by the first hydrogen absorption with H and O and OH radical, but actually OH radical plays the most important role. The first uh, 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 reaction and the subsequent second reaction, uh, second hydrogen absorption uh, reactions are the major source of, yeah, actual major source of the heat release. Sorry. Interestingly, uh, NO uh, production and the reduction pass also responsible for the heat release, this around here. As for the uh, combination reaction in the messianic frame, the C286 route, you know, the it's well known that the strongly pressure dependent cause of the decrease in the binding velocity under the high pressures. On the other hand, there is a no similar recombination reaction in the ammonia flame. Rather, NO2H2 route, which indicated the recombination reaction is all, also thought to be increased the laminar burning, uh, burning velocity. It is uh, 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 the Professor Nakamura in our university is working on this. So, uh, so the reason for the small dip in the laminar burst high pressure, this is the, the difference in the recombination reactions. Yeah, also it is well known that NO production and ammonia combustion is through the HNO. In the process, O and OH uh, radical plays an important role. So the fuel NOx, uh, fuel NO formation is a uh, uh, suppress under the high pressure conditions where the O and OH concentrations are relatively low due to the recombination reaction and also under pure rich condition where the oxygen is short. Okay, uh, in our research to reduce the uh, uh, fuel NOx emission from ammonia gas turbine, we have uh, proposed the rich lean two-stage combustion, which consists of the rich primary zone and rich secondary zone. 
Okay, the two stage conversion is also known as the RQL conversion for a uh, method for uh, hydrocarbon fuels. But the hydrocarbon conversion uh, 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 combines the properties of prompt NO and the thermal NO, which is different from the present two stage conversion of ammonia frame. Uh, this uh, uh, concept comes from, concept of the uh, ammonia two stage conversion comes from the finding that slightly each combustion can reduce the NO and unburnt ammonia uh, uh, simultaneously. When these uh, slightly each conditions are achieved in the primary zone of the gas turbine combustors, another air is introduced into the secondary zone for the final lean combustion, uh, especially for the uh, 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 produced uh, uh, hydrogen. This region is basically lean equivalence ratio among about the uh, point 0.3. Uh, summer NO formation is uh, suppressed. And uh, this two-stage combustion concept was uh, verified using the actual micro gas turbine combust in our laboratory and combust in laboratory and uh, uh, Fukushima renewable centers. In the case of plane of stream at the point 0.3 megapascal, uh, a further low NOx uh, emissions were achieved and the uh, minimum was 42 ppm, which was low enough even for the SCR system is not used. This is the uh, Dr. Okaho did in our laboratory. The decrease in uh, NO emissions when the pressure rises reflects the effect of radical concentration as described in the previous slide and the reaction mechanism. Here, I'd like to shortly induce one outcome of the ammonia gas turbine development in the SIP Energy Carrier Project. The Fukushima Renewable Energy Institute, uh, Freya Ice, we call, succeeded in the power generation using the micro gas turbine and for uh, uh, and the fuel with ammonia. The gas turbine was filled with yeah, ammonia kerosene in 2014, ammonia methane mixtures, and a single ammonia in 20, 2015 and also successfully tested the two-stage combustion to reduce NOx emission. The uh, gas turbine used the heat regenerative cycles to enhance the flame stability and the combustion efficiency. The uh, SCR system downstream of the gas uh, combustors, turbine, uh, gas turbine combustors is effective to reduce the NOx concentration the, the, at the exit, uh, less than 10 ppm. So the way we started the, uh, the, this uh, development, the uh, NOx emission was over the 1,000 ppm, then uh, use the uh, two-stage combustion, and finally it is less than 200 ppm. It is enough to reduce the, uh, the NOx emission uh, uh, after the SCR system, less than 10 ppm or 5 ppm. So that's good, very good success. Uh, okay, these figures illustrate the process of the gas turbine development in the ice. Uh, sorry, uh, okay, okay. Sorry, this is the, okay. Uh, something, something different, okay. Yeah, this figure, yeah. This figure illustrates the process of gas turbine development in free ice. The, the original combustors here, as I told, the, the kerosene combustors, and uh, it's a 10 p 1000 ppm, and the NOx concentration reduced by the rich in combustion, and uh, very low NOx emission is achieved. And finally, it is uh, 190 ppm. Um, the, the NOx emission tends to increase the lower uh, uh, power premise combustion because it's uh, difficult to maintain the optimum. Uh, 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 optimum equivalence ratio over the wide range of operating condition. So in addition uh, to the ice, flare ice micro gas turbine, IHI uh, that uh, uh, belong to the uh, one of the, uh, uh, that is uh, one organization companies uh, uh, attended the uh, SIB project succeeded in 22 megawatt gas turbine power generation using ammonia co-fired with natural gas. Okay. So uh, at present, uh, there are two types of the ammonia gas turbine system. The first one is the, uh, the uh, gaseous ammonia supply type, which has been developed for the small, medium gas, uh, a small or medium gas turbine ranging from 50 kilowatt to, to 2 megawatt. 
that basically gases ammonia is supplied uh, to the combustor for a single field combustion and covalent with natural gas. Another gas turbine using the ammonia as a fuel developed by Mitsubishi Power for a large scale gas turbine combined cycle burns ammonia decomposed hydrogen. The uh, ammonia is decomposed by the high pressure cracking catalysis system. And after removing the residual ammonia, hydrogen and nitrogen are supplied to the gas turbine to be co fired with a natural gas. Yeah, this uh, method is uh, cost effective for large gas turbine system because the already uh, the Mitsubishi already developed the 30% hydrogen dry raw NOx combustor, uh, and uh, it can be used without modification. Also, according to the, uh, yeah, uh, according to the person in charge of the project, the Mitsubishi uh, uh, said that the, uh, the direct ammonia combustion of large gas turbine system will inevitably result in high NOx emission due to the high turbine inlet temperature, he said. This method is of interest in Europe, nice. uh, uh, where the hydrogen is mainly used because of the com <laughs> compatibility with the hydrogen combustion. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, finally, I'd like to introduce the liquid ammonia spray combustion very short, shortly that we are now involving in. Uh, when a gas ammonia is used uh, 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 as a gas turbine fuel, the system needs to evaporators and accumulators and so on. The gas compressor is also needed to pressurize the gas ammonia for the combustor when the, the pressure of the evaporator is atmospheric pressure. Uh, if these devices are not needed to supply gas ammonia, the system would be much simpler, the cost would be reduced and the energy efficiency would be improved. So uh, uh, little repeating of the existing gas turbine system is easily uh, possible. Therefore, direct injection of liquid ammonia uh, into the gas turbine combustor is another choice. The IHI uh, uh, has successfully achieved the stable power generation up to 20% liquid ammonia spray in heat value by co-firing with the natural gas in power generation demonstration using two megawatt gas turbine last year. Actually, uh, there are interesting phenomena in the liquid ammonia spray combustion. The uh, ch challenge with ammonia spray combustion is that uh, spray characteristics are quite different from those of the hydrocarbon liquid fuel. And the large latent heat of evaporation result in the lower local temperature. The former ex uh, uh, exhibited interesting spray properties called flashing spray and uh, it's linked to combustion phenomena. It's an emerging the research topic in the future. Uh, we are much, uh, we are much uh, interested in this phenomena. Also, another, the, also the latter makes the low temperature, a very large uh, radiant heat makes the flame stabilization more difficult. Uh, actually, we succeeded in the stabilization of the single ammonia spray flames in the large scale swirl burner using the preheated air over the 500 Kelvin. In this experiment, they used the combustor with the uh, centralized the uh, 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 centralized injection nozzle and air swirl with a large uh, swirl numbers. A laser tomography of the observations uh, of the liquid ammonia spray showed that the spray evaporated very quickly at the bottom of the combustors. However, the temperature profiles of the uh, central axis in non-combustion case showed that the temperature immediately dropped um, after the injection of the nozzle about minus 40 to 50 uh, degrees Celsius. In gas turbine, the air temperature, uh, yeah, that is the uh, difficult point. In gas turbine, the temperature increased due to the compression uh, process. So it is expected that the liquid ammonia can be used for gas turbine operated high pressure. Okay, we have succeeded in stabilizing a single uh, ammonia spray flame using the preheated air over the 500 Kelvin at, at atmospheric pressure as shown in the, the pictures. 
However, the range of the uh, equivalential uh, that can stabilize the flame is rather narrower and depends on the preheating air temperature. So we are conducting joint research liquid ammonia spray combustion with flare ice and HI. The flare ice has successfully achieved a single ammonia spray combustion at 2.5 atmosphere and a test rig of 50 kilowatt micro gas turbine combustors. When developing the ammonia gas turbine using an ammonia spray combustion, that changes the emission characteristic, especially the increase in the N2O emission, must be taken into account. That is a big challenge, I guess. Okay, uh, I, uh, it's time. <laughs> Uh, past already. Uh, these are the, uh, the current status initiatives. Currently, the number of the, uh, the uh, nat uh, national project uh, program of the ammonia combustion use are the underway in Japan, uh, one gigawatt uh, class uh, large scale power is called power generation. This is the uh, Suda san, and IJ will talk about this later. The middle and large scale power generation or by co fired single fuel the ammonia gas turbine and the industrial furnace using the oxygen enriched condition uh, and ammonia. And the ammonia reciprocal engines for the marine and the general purpose use. And what we should do <laughs> in the next, I, as mentioned in, in, at the beginning of my talk, much of the basic research of the ammonia combustion also strongly linked to the practical research uh, as many of the issues were found in the reverse from the practical research. Uh, these are listed how to develop the ammonia gas turbine combustible large scale gas turbine combined cycle, how to ignite and complete the combustion in the maritime ammonia diesel engine, how to achieve the low NO2 emissions even for relatively low temperature combustions, and how to control the reduced NOx emission in ammonia spray combustion, and how to enhance radiation heat transfer in the furnace and the boilers using the ammonia combustion. There are many things that, uh, that our combustion communities uh, need to do and uh, we have uh, much uh, 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 hope to many people or uh, in the community join that the uh, ammonia combustion data. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kobayashi. And uh, the we, the, after the, the talk of, the, of the Dr. Barrow, we have a uh, uh, discussion, we, I will run, uh, we, we have the question time. So the, 